Hey, Brent. That guy might win today, unless Alexi takes it or a house shows up. What's up, everybody? Ben Delaney here at Old Man Winter Rally, a gravel race in Lyons, Colorado. Rowena is the crux of this race. It's a one mile climb, just under a thousand feet. When it's dry, it's rideable, it's single track. Today will not be dry, it'll be a mushy, icy mess. Uh, fastest times, probably when it's dry, a step cruise, like 10 minutes or so. Today I'm guessing I'll be going like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Typically here I get dropped before we even get to Rowena because it's a long climb up to Rowena on pavement. That's the first Hogwarts sorting hat when guys like Brendan Wurtz and Alexi Vermeulen separate the wheat from the chaff. Then it is the Rowena climb, uh, descent, a couple more climbs, and then some dirt rock and rolling back here to the finish in Lyons, Colorado. I'm testing out the new Ventum GS1. I've got some NV 3.4 sweet wheels with some IRC Boken double cross tires in 42. We'll see how the bike and the rider go. So there are a few different events at Old Man Winter Rally. There's a 50K race, which Jens Voigt and some hundreds and hundreds of others did. There's a 100K course that tackles that 50K course, plus adds on three paved climbs and the tricky Rowena single track. And then there's also a running event, and some folks do the double of the run and the bike. After a couple days of sun and high winds, the start of the course and all the 50k course was pretty dry and tacky and Alexi Vermeulen and big Brennan Wirtz took turns pulling the train. As with so many gravel events it was a mass start affair. There's no age groups, there's no gender groups, it's just one big happy family all in there together. Something I very much appreciate and enjoy about gravel racing. It feels like a giant group ride. I was expecting the left hand canyon, a long paved climb up to Rowena to be the first Hogwarts sorting hat, but actually that came earlier as the race was broken up into several small groups before we even started the climb. After Alexi took a long pull stringing out the group, Brennan attacked and that left Alexi dangling a bit off the back. I jumped on Vermeulen's wheel and he dragged himself and me back up to that front group. I was initially quite pleased to be there until I realized I had no business being in that group of six off the front of the race with an hour plus climb to come. So I popped myself there before the climb started and got in with the second group as we began the left hand canyon climb. Now I was on the 42 Boken double cross tires which are definitely overkill for this course when it's mostly dry. You know a, a 40 or even a 35 file tread for most of the course is kind of what you'd want to run. Like many gravel events, Old Man Winter is a mix of pavement and gravel roads and some single track, which begs the question, which tire should you run? Or more to the point, which condition do you want to optimize for? Because one tire isn't going to be perfect for all the conditions. And as I was grinding up the long paved climb, sure, yeah, I would have probably wanted a road tire for that section. It was fun to see some of the local fast guys like Noah Granigan and Riley Sheehan out sitting by the side of the road, happened to heckle me just as I was coming off that second group. <laughs> the 42 tires with the big bitey tread helped a little bit on Rowena, but I needed more help than just a tire could provide. You know, I'd ride a little bit and then wash out and run and then do the world's most awkward cyclocross remount. I must have set a course record for a number of awkward cross remounts trying to get back on the bike. Running and pedaling and flopping at one point, I hit a rock and went, over the bars. Alas, my GoPro was not on for that stretch, but I hope you have a mental image of me doing a belly flop snow angel there on the trail. Another fun part about the Rowena section is that everyone is having their mishaps at different times, so you're often passing and repassing different folks as you all struggle your way up. The mixed terrain also begs the question of clothing. At Old Man Winter, it often starts at freezing or below, so you want to be bundled up for the start and speeds are high. Then as you climb, obviously you warm up and then we are going up Rowena, just crawling along, trudging through the snow. 
you're sweating your face off. So you don't want to be wearing a winter jacket there. So last night I was laying in bed thinking, do I want to wear a thermal long sleeve so I'm warm, but then I'll be like soaked with sweat and I'm coming down the descent I'll freeze. What, what to do? <laughs> I ultimately went with arm warmers, short sleeve jersey, and then a vest with Polartex Alpha, a material that I'm very fond of. You know, it's a super lightweight, fleecy, and very lofty material. It comes in a few different brands make clothing with it. This is a Castelli vest. Packs down nice and tight, so it's really not much bigger than just a regular windshell vest, but it's so much warmer. Another fabric I'm a big fan of is Gore-Tex Infinium. Wore this little skull cap to stay warm at the start, pulled it off at the start of the climb, and certainly up Rowena, and then popped it back on for the descent. Doesn't add much weight, very packable, but definitely adds plenty of warmth. So big fan of Gore-Tex Infinium, which like the Alpha, you can find in products from many companies out there. Another thing I am a fan of, not a fabric, but timeouts in bike races. That's right. You know, I grew up playing basketball. I like the concept of a timeout and often joke about wishing I had a timeout in normal bike races. And at Old Man Winter, you do have that and that there's two time segments. The first goes from the start to just past the top of Rowena uh, after a dirt muddy descent. At that point, you can stop, uh, regroup with the people that dropped you or maybe wait for a few more folks to catch up. So you've got a critical mass. There's a feed station there so you can top off your bottles, get some food, you know, have a laugh about uh, what had just transpired uh, and then get going again for the second time section. That comes after the descent down Sunshine Canyon. I've given Josh grief for years that Sunshine Canyon, the descent is the only place where I've got an advantage in this race, but ultimately being a winter race, it's definitely the right call to have the descent neutralized because even if it isn't snowy or icy, there's so much just grit and sand on the roads that that could be dangerous. So we go down to Sunshine, we go through the west end of Boulder, and then the timing starts again. The second and final time segment starts climbing up the very steep Linden. Ryan Peachy was sitting there by the side of the road. He said, hey, Ryan, how you doing? And he laughed, he said, hey, better than you. Man, and that was just at the start of the climb where I proceeded to get dropped like it was my job. After the Linden climb, there's a dirt descent, takes you to the last paved climb, old stage, and then it's downhill and flat dirt rollers for the rest of the way back in. The 100K course meets up in the dirty flats with the 50K course, which I appreciate. Just everybody all in there together. It adds some chaos for sure, but also a lot of fun. And fundamentally, I like the fact that you can't really tell what's going on when you combine the two courses and the time segments. For instance, when Scott Funston, who was in the front group with Alexi and Brennan, rode almost the entire Rowena climb, like the cyclocross professional that he is. Neither Scott nor Alexi knew exactly how much of a time split he had on them at the top. They had to wait to see the results at the finish. So what Alexi did was attack on Linden and put time into Scott and drill it as hard as he could all the way to the finish. That combined with the two groups mixing together, the 50K and 100K, certainly adds to a bit of chaos, but I, think this is fundamentally a good thing because it emphasizes the fact that this is just a game. This is something we're doing for fun and you don't exactly know what's going on and that's okay. You can still give it stick, go hard and have fun racing. This video is supported by Stages Cycling, which makes its power meters here in Boulder, Colorado. You can buy left, right and dual sided meters for a variety of cranks. Also, you can send in your own Shimano crank or cranks for a factory install, and the folks at Stages will have you up and riding with power in a matter of a couple of weeks. If you'd like to save 20% on a power meter, you can use the code the ride at stagescycling.com. The final hour or so was a bit windy, and I was grateful to have some folks to ride with, and also a you know, relatively lower position on the bike. Ventum sent the bike as the kids set it up these days with the hoods turned in, I definitely use that to make myself as small as possible to crawl back into lines. At the finish, was happy to see the sun was out, the band was playing, 
and there were lots of folks hanging out enjoying the hot food and cold drinks and each other's company there in the big park in Lyons, Colorado. I uh, somehow won, but the real, the real win was getting mac and cheese and soup. <laughs> but I got tried with like the whole thing with Jess and I think Deanna. I shouldn't say the whole thing, not the first part. But then they, I didn't stop at the aid station. I saw them and then got to ride the rest with them. So that was really fun. How did you place today? Uh, I'm pretty sure number, came home with the win in the rim break category. I uh, wasn't, wasn't too advertised, but uh, it, we were out there and uh, we were competing hard. So, uh, hey, well done. A win's a win. <laughs> Old man winter was slightly wintry, a little bit icy, and very muddy. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, what would you give it? I would give it a 9.7. Do it again? Yes, would do again. Peter, how about for you, sir? I would do it again. I would probably wear toe covers. I would probably use bigger tires. And I would probably eat more. But I would definitely do the race again. You know, seeing everybody hanging out with their family and friends is a bit of a contrast to your local road racing scene. Not to say that roadies don't have any fun after events, but it is absolutely a different vibe at a gravel race. I certainly enjoyed catching up with a bunch of folks there. The interview with Jens Voigt, who of course was fantastic, and ah, total forehead slapper. I managed to somehow set my camera on slow-mo, so I lost that great interview. Sorry, Yinzy. So for the bike, yeah, certainly enjoyed the bike overall. I liked the positioning of the MV bars, having a bit of a flare there. I liked the flex in the seat post and a bit in the saddle itself. A couple points I hit some bumps pretty good and hard and the bars slipped down a scooch. That's probably due to the mechanic not <laughs> torque checking the bolts as I put on a uh, different mount uh, on the stems. The MV bars, the SES uh, Aero All Road bars, or the SES All Road bars, which have a flat arrow top, don't leave you a lot of room uh, to mount a computer mount. So I put on a silk mount at the stem bolts and evidently that was not tight enough because I slipped down a couple times when hitting giant potholes that I didn't see popping up on the road. Otherwise had zero issues. Tires held, chain started squeaking a bit after all the uh, snow and muck, but no whammy, so a successful run. Unless you, of course, count me going up and over the bars, but that was pilot error, not bicycle fail. So the Vindum GS1 has a flip chip on the fork, which allows you to change the fork offset and the trail, which, of course, affects the handling. There's a relatively middle of the road setting and then a longer, more stable setting. Now, typically I like something a little more nimble, but for the slushy icy conditions, I left it in the longer trail setting for today. And at no point <laughs> did I wish to have a faster handling bike. So I was happy to have that option. That's kind of a cool thing that uh, you have with this bike is the ability to flip it back and forth. It does take a bit of doing and that you have to you know, take the wheel out, undo two bolts and flip the chip there uh, on either side of the fork leg and then also move the brake caliper to compensate for the movement of the hub. So not something that you want to do before every ride, but you know, something that uh, certainly lets you taste test two different settings with just one bike. So if I were to ride this bike again next year, I think the only thing I would change would be going with some skinnier, lighter tires. I love the Envy wheels, the 3.4s are sweet. I love the two by GRX Di2. I was absolutely in the tiniest gear uh, parts of the day, and then I was in the biggest gear for others, and I like the small steps in between. I was riding with my man, Peter, who had a chain drop eight times. Uh, something I'd seen before at that race, something I experienced myself before at that race. And when you've got a front derailleur, you can just shift that back on nine times out of 10. When you've got a single ring, you've got to stop and fix it, so. Not that that is the only reason to have a front derailleur, but a little bit of insurance in gravel races that can be mucky, goopy, chaotic messes is not a bad thing in my book. So back there at the park, everybody checks results. Most of the folks at the front of the race have a pretty good idea where they finished up. For instance, Ruth Winder knew she had won 
the women's race. And Alexi thought he had won the men's race, but had to check the results just to make sure. Everybody checked their own, had a good time there in the park. So another successful iteration of Old Man Winter Rally in the books. I hope to see you out there in Lyons, Colorado next year. In the meantime, thanks for subscribing and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Gotta make it on Ben's videos. I agree. <laughs> there we go. <laughs>